Hey everybody, Jeff, your executive gardener. Thanks for joining me for this episode. So, as you can see here, I have a pretty good amount of pepper plants. In Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, we're pretty much past the frost date. So, as you'll see, my peppers are all in these small pots, and I've got to start getting them in the ground. Here's a problem, though. I back up to woods. This is all my woods here and the deer come out at night. Now, they haven't come out so far, and they've not munched on these plants yet. But in addition, rabbit come out of there, sometimes groundhogs. So I gotta figure out what to do. There's a fence that's gonna be going in, six foot fence all the way around here in about four weeks. But I don't wanna lose that time. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of a chance. I'm gonna grow these uh, four foot raised beds, and I'm going to fill them with soil and I'll get into that in a second but they're four feet off the ground a rabbit's not going to jump into that a groundhog's not going to get into that now deer can help themselves and munch from that but I typically have a dog that's up there right there on the patio that they usually stay away from they typically stay away from her she's a, a pit bull terrier does not like deer so um and then I've got other you know I've got other look at this I got all these plants I got to start getting into uh, the ground and then over here I've got more pepper plants as well so I got to get them out of the bag and the reason they're in the bags and these pots is that I was taking them in and out it was getting 39 degrees at night and they were just they were getting crushed so what I've done here as you'll see is I've turned this bed I think I got this for $105 at Walmart this bed on the bottom of the bed there's wood slats there's holes what I then did is I got this weed cloth this black weed cloth and you'll see I Staple, use a staple gun and I put it all around the raised bed so the soil doesn't fall through but the drainage will go through the slats and that's obviously a porous uh, weed guard uh, and the weeds won't grow through it either. Um, so what I did here on the bottom and I think Gary Polarczyk just did something like this on his channel uh, and I want to give credit to him because he got his out a week before mine did but I basically you don't need the most expensive potting mix to put in a garden raised bed. What I basically did was I got this better homes and garden raised bed mix okay and that's about eight dollars a bag and then i got this just like gary did interestingly enough i got it at walmart this pro mix pro mix uh premium moisture mix which is basically co coconut core it's compressed and i got this at walmart as well for eight dollars and that's two cubic feet so what i did was i basically put uh, this first go raised gardening bed mix in here uh, and then I put a bunch of perlite you'll see the perlite right there and that's why it looks so porous I'm letting it dry out here a little bit and then for the next two inches I'll put in some of this uh, premium uh, moisture potting mix and that'll be on the top I will then mix into this premium potting mix a bunch of nutrients Epsom salt uh, bone meal and um, an overall, I think it's a 444 fertilizer uh, for the bed in the planting holes. And I think I can probably get about six pepper plants in this, and that should do it well. And it's about a foot deep, as you'll see there. So it's gonna it's gonna sink down a little bit, but I think that'll do. And then once I'm done putting this pro mix on top, which is kind of light and fluffy. I will then put on top of that the brown mulch to keep in the moisture. So that's my plans for this bed. The other one will be doing the same thing. I got to buy myself four weeks here um, until, because this all this is going to be grass uh, and fence all around. And then where I'm standing here, uh, this will eventually be raised beds. It's a huge hill right now. Second year plan, we're going to put stepped raised beds into here. First year, I'm just going to buy raised beds similar to what I have here. I think I got this at Northern Tool Company, and the grass will be around it. I'm going to be growing cucumbers up this trellis, and then uh, certainly filling that with uh, garden soil and a similar mix that I did here. So uh, let me get the pro mix down and start getting some planting done, then I'll uh, bring you back. Hey everybody, so I'm back. I filled the 4x4 raised bed up uh, with some of this light material, uh, the cocoa core, the, uh, the uh, pro mix uh, soil. So it's kind of light and fluffy. It's on top. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plant six peppers in this bed. 
Uh, one is going to be the, uh, actually they're all I think going to be shishito peppers. And I'm going to space them out about this is about I don't know two feet this way and two feet this way so I'll get six plants in so what I'm going to do here and this is the best result and how to do this is you just dig a little hole here okay and I have the plant here what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three ingredients in the hole where the plant is I'm going to go a little bit deeper because I'm going to put some of this uh, the potting mix over this but first I'm going to start with the premium uh, my uh, screw me mycorrhizal inoculant so I'll put a little bit of that in the hole okay like such you don't have to be particular I'm going to put a little bit of this bone meal uh, it's phosphorus and that's going to lead to certainly uh, lots of flowers I'm going to put a little bit of the Epsom salt uh, which obviously is uh, critical, critical for growth as well. And I'm going to take a little bit of this Dr. Earth Premium Gold Organic Fertilizer, and um, I will uh, put this in the hole as well. So all of this goes in the hole. I simply, I don't want the plants touching the fertilizer, so I'll take this plant, Shishito Pepper. I will simply take it out of here. And you'll see by the bottom, the roots are pretty they're ready to go into another container, okay? So uh, what I'll do is I'll put it in this hole, like as such, and then I'll just cover it up with uh, a little bit of this potting mix. I'll probably uh, fill some more in additionally. So there's one there, and then I'll do a second one over here uh, toward this side, give it a little bit of spacing. Again, I'll go a little bit deeper, deeper a little of the uh, misericordial, a uh, little bit of this all-purpose fertilizer in the hole, a uh, little bit of the uh, organic bone meal, and a little bit of the Epsom salt. That should do the trick, and we're good to go. I'll put a little the potting mix on top of it so the roots don't touch that directly. We'll take this out again, another shishito seedling. Look at that. The roots are ready to grow and expand. I'll put this in the hole again, cover it up ever so simply. Now I think it's really important when you do this that uh, water it right afterwards, but also you notice it's not that sunny out. It's 6, 6.30, 7 at night. Uh, if these plants do go in shock, and they shouldn't because uh, you know there was very little stress to the plant by moving it, you don't want the sun in the middle of the night beating down on this. You'd rather do it at night. It gives it 12 hours to be in the dark, recover. The sun will come up tomorrow and we'll go from there. So let me plant all these out. I'll bring you back and show you what the rest of the bed looks like and I'll water it and we'll go from there. All right, so what we're going to do now is we've got everything planted. We've got our six shishito peppers in. What we're going to do now is give them a little bit of water. This is some fish fertilizer in here, which is 511 NPK. And we're simply going to water them down real good like this. Not too much. Give them a little bit of water, and then tomorrow morning I'll come back. Don't worry about getting the leaves doused. Tomorrow morning, I'll come back and give them a little bit more. That's about enough. And then, uh, it, as you know, the fer fish fertilizer stinks, um, but plants love it. Gives them a nitrogen boost, a little bit of phosphor phosphorus and potassium. Remember, I put all those nutrients in the hole, so I wanted to kind of blend in there and allow the roots to start absorbing this. And because this fish fertilizer is in liquid form, it's readily accessible to the plants and they can, the roots can start uh, drinking it up already. So next I'm gonna do is I've watered it. Now I'm gonna come back in a second and I'll bring you back in a second. And I'm gonna put a little bit of brown mulch. Now you wanna put the mulch on top in a very thin layer. What that mulch will do is it will keep the moisture inside this bed so if you happen to be away for a day or two it'll help when the sun beats this six to eight hours a day remember pepper plants love sun six to eight hours a day and uh but it'll keep the moisture in so it doesn't dry up and you have inconsistent watering so let me put some mulch in i'll bring it back and close all right so you'll see what i'm, uh, I'm continuing to put these wood chips i only want about a half an inch layer on here and again, it's just to keep the moisture in. 
Uh, I got some standard brown mark, brown mulch bark. Say that three times fast at the uh, at the garden center today, and it's relatively inexpensive, like three dollars a bag. But it really will do uh, wonders in keeping this moisture in, and uh, that's about it. Um, so. Um, you see what you get here, it works pretty well. I don't think these plants are going to be in uh, too much of shock from uh, the transplant. They've got overnight to recover before the sun comes up. We're calling for, uh, I think, five to six days of 75 degree weather. Pepper, full sun, peppers love that. Um, anyway, I hope this video has helped. And again, like I said uh, from the beginning of the video, the reason I'm doing this is that my backyard's being done. But if you live in a condo or an apartment, if you got a little bit of a backyard, you can do this. And I guarantee you, there's a few things that I like about this raised bed concept. I probably will not have any weeds, especially since I just put the mulch in. I can control the nutrients. There's no way rabbits can get up here. Certainly squirrels could climb if they wanted to. Uh, and eventually the fence will be around my yard to prevent the deer from getting in. But these pepper seedlings are off to a great start. And, um, you know, I'll bring you back hopefully in 30, 45 days once we start getting some uh, peppers on here. But uh, again, it's in, si it's in six to eight hours of full sun, and uh, we should have some great, these are all shishito peppers, sweet eating peppers, and we'll go from there. Well, listen, thanks for joining me for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this raised bed garden exercise, how to do it. Until next time, Jeff, your executive gardener, see you then.